Today I'm going to do a pretty major change to my home network by getting rid of my rack from the living room and moving it through to my office and then replacing this with something a bit more aesthetically pleasing. I've had this rack here for, well, a couple of years now since I moved in really and it's featured in a couple of videos and I do love it but it's quite big and imposing to have in the living room especially in terms of depth because it's designed obviously for servers and network equipment where it can be kind of deep and even though this is a short depth rack it's a lot deeper than the average sort of AV cabinet. So it is quite large in the corner of the room. It's not particularly loud, but the server does have hard drives in it that do make quite a loud sort of grinding noise every so often. And that's normally okay, but you know, if I've, if I've got, you know, if I'm sitting in the room and it's quiet, or potentially if I've got people staying over sleeping on the couch, this can be a bit loud. And also the lights aren't potentially great if there's someone sleeping here that is quite sensitive to bright light from the rack. And there have been times I've had someone staying over and I've turned it off. So it'd be quite nice to get this out of here into my office and then get a smaller cabinet in here for the AV equipment because this is currently a mix of network equipment and AV equipment. So I've not yet decided what I want to put in here in terms of a cabinet. I'll actually, I'll show it in this video, but I'll order it partway through the video almost. But what I want to do first of all is actually get this rack moved through to the office just so I can have it there for a while and check that I, quite, that I like it in that environment because if I don't like it through there, I might abort the project and you know, do something different. So the plan in this first part is to get everything here powered off, de-racked, and then just connect my AV equipment up in the corner here. I'll just sit it on the floor and then get the rack moved through to the office. So now to start off, let's take a look at what we've got in the rack. And because people constantly ask in every video that this is shown in, this is a Z-Pass SJB rack. And no, I don't really know where you can get it. I bought this in probably 2013. I've had it for a very long time. And I bought it from eBay from the manufacturer directly, but they don't seem to sell them on eBay anymore. So I don't think they sell to the average consumer anymore. So yeah, it's Z-Pass SGB, but I don't know how easy it'll be for you to get one. But yeah, so what we've got in here is we've got my AV receiver, which is a Denon AVR X2400H, a 2UPC, this is a home theatre machine. So it's, I mean, it's ancient, it's an AMD FX 4300. I think it's got a GeForce GT 1030 in it, purely to give an HDMI 2.0 output to the 4K TV. So that's just a standard Windows PC. My Unified 24 port switch that connects everything in here up. And my 4U server, which is essentially a Xeon E3 based server with a bunch of hard drives. It runs free NAS, it's basically just a NAS. And a single VM for some home automation. And then down here we've got my satellite box and a APC switched PDU. So the plan will be to take anything networking related and keep it in the rack and put it through in the office and then leave AV equipment in here. So the AV equipment I'm going to be leaving will be my receiver, the PC, and the satellite box. Ultimately, long term, this, this is obviously a rack mount PC. Long term, I'll probably be replacing this with something better. I'll probably get either a, like a small form factor like Optiplex type thing, or ideally like a Mac Mini. So I'll keep this for now, and whatever cabinet I get, it'll probably fit in because it's about the same width as the receiver. But long term, this will be being replaced with something much smaller. And then through next door, I'll be moving the switch server and PDU, which will leave a lot of free space in this rack. And even though I don't have anything immediately to fill it with, it'll be nice to have that space because it means, for example, if I wanted a separate server, because this is obviously a NAS and it's running a VM under free NAS, but if I potentially wanted to have a proper server running an actual hypervisor, I could have a second server in here and have space to do that. I also don't need to worry as much about noise in my office. I don't want it to be loud, but if I'm in there, I'm usually sitting with music on anyway. I'm not trying to sleep. I'm not trying to be chilled out in there so I don't need to worry if this has like a slight hum to it and it also means that for any audio equipment if I have any like audio equipment in the office that I want to rack mount I could also add that in here so even though there won't be it won't be nearly as populated as this when it's in the office there'll still be a couple of machines in it and there will be expansion potential but yeah so the plan now is just get everything here powered off and we can start de-racking it
Okay, so that's all the cables removed around the back. It's definitely a lot neater. So there's just a power, power one left. I'm going to have to do a lot of cleaning around here because obviously there's a lot of dust caught around from several years being behind here. But yep, that's all cables removed around there. If you look down inside again, you can see there's nothing really left. All I've left is just a PDU with the cable going out the back because that will be moving over to the office anyway. And then this cable here goes into a power brick and that powers this 120mm fan I've got in the top. I don't really know if I'll need this once I've moved it because I put that there for the AV receiver because it produces quite a lot of heat. The server isn't that bad, so just convection might be enough. So I'll leave it in for now, but I might might not need it. And ultimately I'd probably replace this with something temperature controlled anyway because this is a bit loud and rubbish anyway. But yeah, that's all that's left there. And that leaves this huge pile of cables down there, just like piles of old cables, PS2, stuff like that. I also need to separate this out because some of this will go into the office in the rack, some of this will stay in here. And then the PS2 and Wii I'll probably just take out for now. I put them there just because I had them spare. I'll probably take them out for now until I get a cabinet, and then when I get a cabinet they might be able to go back in. And then over here we can see the rest of the stuff. So I've got my server there. That'll go back into this rack once it's in the office. My satellite box which will stay in the living room. Subwoofer will stay in the living room. Receiver will stay in the living room. This PC will stay here for now before I upgrade it. And then the switch will be going back into the rack. And then the rack shelves will probably just chuck back in the rack just to put a little bit of storage space in it essentially. Now one thing I will need to do is I'll need to reverse the door on this rack because I mean I've already reversed this once to get it, make it fit in here but the problem is it now opens like that whereas in the office I want it to open the other way. So this is quite easy to do. What I just need to do on this rack is remove these two screws here, they're like sort of hex key things. Remove them there at the top and bottom and those essentially clamp the glass in. So when I remove those the, gla the glass will just pull out. Um, once I've got the glass out I just need to move these over to the other side and then we're done. And then the only other thing I'll need to do is use this little screw on the locking mechanism, loosen that off and then flip this around the other way and then tighten it back up, I'll just show that later. And that just means that this will turn the right way because otherwise it'll sort of turn the wrong way. I'll show that later because it's a bit hard to explain. But yeah, just going to swap that door over. And then I'll also need to clean it out because obviously this thing does have some level of airflow through it and it's been sitting for years, you know, not being cleaned so there's a lot of dust in here so I'll give that a good clean as well. Okay, so now reverse the door. So it opens the other way, as you can see there. But now you can see the issue with this lock is that because it was because I've essentially turned the door upside down, you now turn the lock right to unlock it and left to lock it, which is obviously the wrong way around. But thankfully this is really easy to fix, so I'll show you that now. Okay, so here we are looking at the back of the lock, and as you can see, yep, it turns the wrong way around. But all you need to do to fix this is essentially we want to turn it to the locked position. So turn it all the way right, and that's where it should be locked, but it's now in the unlocked position. And then if you loosen off this screw here, there's like a square nut at the back here and all you need to do is loosen it off level there bring it round so it's now in the position that it would have been in to be locked and then screw it back in there and that's now flipped the other way around so now if we want to shut the door we do that and as you see we turn it right to lock and left to unlock so that's now working correctly so there we go that's the rack all tidied up and ready to move. Definitely a lot cleaner as well now and the door's reversed. So what I can now do is get this out of here, set up a temporary AV setup in the corner and then get the rack set up in the office. Okay so we've now got the temporary setup so I've taken the rack out and just connected all the AV stuff up temporarily on the floor. So it's not the neatest but it'll do for now until I can get a cabinet. So you've pro I've done videos of this stuff before but essentially I've got the sub that's connected to the receiver. The receiver then connects into all the speakers over these cables here so they all go to banana plugs. So just each pair of these is one of the speakers, they're all labelled. That goes off the speakers around the room. Then there's HDMI here up to the TV, so that also goes to the receiver. These two satellite feeds then come out and go into the satellite box, which is just sitting on its side here. This is actually the, t is the an FM DAB radio aerial. That just connects into the receiver, just so the FM tuner works. Not that I really use it, but I may as well connect it. And then that will loop in and loop out through that amplifiers for the TV aerial, so that goes off the distribution amp in the hall. Then finally over here we've got a double socket that powers everything with this essentially power stuff that I want to switch off at the mains when I'm not using it and the plug powers the satellite box because that stays on 24-7 so it can record and then three ethernet cables that connect all the devices because when I originally had the rack here I had a four, four port link aggregation which is why I put four ports in but it's actually quite useful because now I've taken the rack out there's four ports here so I won't need to switch I can just plug all three devices in there and it gives me space for one for either an extra device or if I was to, for example, put any HDMI over Cat6 system in, I could connect that into there as well. So that's quite good having those extra ports. 
So yeah, it's not the neatest in the world, but at least it gives me a sort of temporary setup that can work, and then the PC is just sort of sitting on the floor down there below the rec receiver, which will do the job for now. So yeah, it's not the neatest thing in the world, but that'll do for a while. Then I can go out, sort of look at all the different cabinet options, get some sort of cabinet. I'll just be sitting from IKEA probably, but get a nice cabinet, get everything mounted in it. But yeah, that's the temporary setup there. Now time to get the rack put in the office. Okay, so now we're in my office and we can see where it's going to go. So we've got the desk on the right here, and then there's just this big sort of empty space down here. It used to be a bit smaller, but I've just moved the desk to the, to the right a little bit, and that's freed up about 600 mils of space for the rack. And yeah, this space has sort of sat like this for years, and it just has a printer on the floor, which has just taken up a lot of sort of dead space, really, and you can't really do much with it. And ultimately, all that happens in this area is just, if I've got random boxes or anything, it just ends up getting dumped down here and just accumulates junk. So this seems like a perfect place to move the rack to. And even though it's not got the four ports the living room has, it does have two network ports there. So I can still plug the switch into those in a link aggregation, connect the printer, server and everything to the switch inside the rack, and then run those two cables that currently go off to my docking stations on my desks for my personal laptop and my work laptop, there's two separate docks. Um, those, those cables for, for those docks can then just go straight into the switch in the rack. And what that also means, as a sort of slight benefit, is it'll also give me a managed switch in the office, which means if I'm ever doing any projects or experimental, experimental work or anything like that, I can actually have a switch with a lot of different ports I can put on different VLANs very easily. It's not too bad with the current setup because I can there's these two ports here and there's another two on the adjacent wall. So I could actually, like, I can actually map those on the switch in the whole cupboard and put VLANs on them and stuff. But having a managed switch next to my desk could be quite nice. And yeah, so that's where the rack's going to go. My only concern here is power. There's just a single double socket there. And that currently powers my desk and then the other cable goes to an extension lead that sits under the table I film videos on. That's probably not going to be enough once I get the rack in because the rack will need a socket, my desk will need a socket and then that doesn't leave anything for this other extension lead. I'll make do for now and probably just, you know, get another extension lead for down there or whatever. But what I'll ultimately do is I'll just probably fit a second socket in there. I need to replace that socket with a metal one anyway because I've still not done it yet. And I think at the same time I do that I'll just add another socket next to it and just have a pair of doubles there and then that'll solve that problem. But yeah, I'll, I'll do that later. So for now, just need to get the rack in here. So that's the rack now moved over and yeah, it looks quite good there. Now the only thing I've noticed is that the red sort of, well not the red, sort of very reddy brown wood colour top doesn't remotely match my desk which is more of a grey colour. Now this always bugged me in the living room as well, which is one of the motivations for moving it, was that this colour just looked totally off. But I think the fact it's almost worse in here because it's next to my desk, so you can actually really see the difference. But what I was thinking of doing in the living room, I'll probably just do the same here eventually, is even if the manufacturer doesn't sell it or if it's hard to get from them, this is really just a sort of 600 by 600 bit of like, you know, chipboard desk top type thing. It's just very, very standard material. It's the exact same material as the desk. So it should, I don't think it would be that hard. And all it's held in by is a bunch of M5 bolts that go go and screw into it, there's like a little sort of screw thread roll plug type thing in the wood. So what I'll probably do in the future is just order a replacement top just from a random company see if I can get a custom sort of 600 by 600 sized countertop that matches my desk or looks reasonably close and I can probably just mod it to fit it. So yeah, looks a bit daft just now but it'll do for now. And yeah that's pretty neat sitting in that corner there. So all I need to do now is get the kit racked up in it. Okay so that's right now fully set up, we can see we've got the printer on here. I've got the rest of the equipment down in it. So let's take a look at what we've got. So if we open the door up, there's not much in here, but here's what we'll take a look. We've got the Unify switch at the top. That's just a standard Unify US24 switch. It's not PoE or anything. So it's 24 port gigabit. These two links go to the two wall ports, which will uplink links it to the whole cupboard switch. So if there's a two port link aggregation for a bit more bandwidth. Three of these ports go to a link aggregation on my server. I don't need all three, but I just connected them because that's how it was set up before. One of these goes into the PDU down the bottom, and then one of these goes off to my work laptop dock, one goes to my personal laptop dock, and then one goes to the printer. Below here we've got my server, which is the one I've made a video of previously. And finally at the bottom, there's the APC switch rack PDU. I had a couple of spare rack shelves, so I've put those in. I've got one more that I might put in, but I've just not done it yet. That's really all there is. I might put more equipment in here later. I've got this random Microtech RB2011 sitting there, I just had it sitting around so I chucked it in there. But even though it's not super populated, it gives me a lot of expansion potential. It means that I can either put a couple of short, small short depth 1U servers into run as VM hosts, or I've also been considering like small form factor optiplexes or think centers, the tiny little micro ones, 
and having a couple of those tactile servers because they're really low power and I can just stick them on the rack shelf. And yeah, it's quite nice having this here. It doesn't take up too much space. It definitely makes a lot more use of the space than I had before when it was just full of junk. And it just sits nice, nicely next to my desk there. And yeah, I might replace the top with a better colour that matches my desk, but I've not done that yet. So yeah, that's the rack now there. So I've now gone out and got the new unit. And this is a Besta unit from Ikea. This is one of their modular systems, so you can build it in any sort of way you want with all different cupboards and stuff. So I've gone for quite a simple setup here. But what I'll do is I'll go away, build part of it and come back and then show what I'm planning. Okay, so that's the cabinet now built. I do definitely have a thing where I love building IKEA furniture. But yep, so I've built the cabinet, and this is the best of frame that's 60 by 60 by 40 deep. So it's 60 wide, 60 high, and then 40 deep. And I've put it on these feet as well, which hold it slightly higher up. Just makes it look a little bit better than a sort of cube sitting on the floor. Obviously, I don't want it looking like this, so I've got a door, so I've got that here, which at first glance looks like I'm an idiot and I've bought the wrong size. But I've not. What I'm planning on doing here is fitting a door that's actually too small for this. And what I'll do is I'll have this door towards the bottom of the unit here. Then what I'll do is I'll install a shelf that lines up with the top of the door, leaving an open compartment at the top. In that open compartment, I'll put my AV receiver because that needs to receive the remote control signals and it does get quite hot, so I want to have a lot of ventilation around that. Then within the area covered by the cupboard door, I'll have another shelf. And in there, I'll put my satellite box, a PC, all the extension leads and power supply type stuff, and then potentially like a games console or something in the future. That's the plan here. So what I now need to do is get this door put on, get the shelves installed, then we should be good to put it in. The only other thing I'll need to do is figure out how I'm going to route cables around, because I'll need to route the cables down the back of the shelves and also out the back of the unit, which currently just has a solid back panel. I think I'll just end up popping out my hole saw and just put a few holes in it where I need to, but I'll get it all built first and put the holes where I actually need them once I figure that out later. Okay, so I've now fitted the door and I've also fitted the little push to open thing. So you push that side and it springs open, then you just push it to shut it again. And I've installed one of the shelves. So this is roughly what it'll look like. It'll be like this here and my AV receiver will sit on the top. However, the way these shelves mount by, by design is they mount a little bit further back from the front than usual. But then you, you don't, you don't, there's a little gap here. And that does look quite nice in a cupboard. You know, if you open the cupboard, it's quite nice having it set back a little bit. But the problem is in this setting here, it leaves this gap which would sit at the front of the AV receiver and be very noticeable. And likewise, there's then no space at the back to run cables. But if we look at how these felt, um, shelves mount, it's really easy. So if we take this out, on the bottom of the shelf, there's just these little cutouts here that the little fixing goes in, the little bracket goes into. And all the brackets are, are just these little metal things that push into a hole and they just stick out and sit into the bottom of the shelf. So in theory, all I need to do is carefully measure new holes slightly closer to the front of the unit than the original ones, drill some very thin new holes that length, and then put them in, and I can make the shelf further forward. And that'll have the added benefit of giving me a bit of space at the back to feed cables. I won't be able to feed like huge plugs through, but there'll probably be, big, be a big enough gap to feed a couple of HDMI cables and things like that down from the compartment with the AV receiver into the cupboard that'll hold more of the equipment. And likewise, I could potentially feed longer cables or thicker cables if I pulled the shelf out a little bit fed them in, and then put the shelf back in afterwards. So that'd be quite nice. So all I need to do is drill four holes after a very careful measurement, and I can make the shelf and have it sit further forward. Okay, so I've now put these in place and moved them further forward. However, this wouldn't be a video of me building IKEA furniture without me doing something totally wrong and stupid and not reading the instructions properly. So, I've moved all the, went all the effort moving all these forward and then first of all made a couple of errors. First error was putting them so that they're up, they go up and over like this. So then I put them in and in the back two, because they weren't drilling straight into wood, they kind of sag down a bit like that. But I discovered if you turn them the other way up, they're a bit more solid. 
So then I looked at the instructions and it turns out, yeah, you're actually meant to have them that way up, not that way. So I need to go and fix my other Besto unit I built like last year because that's got these the wrong way up. Why don't I read the instructions? But the problem when you move them like that, that holds them more securely, but it now means my measurements are off. So this shelf sits too low down and it sits below the level of the door. However, then in trying to figure out what I was trying to do, I've picked up the wrong instruction book, which was the instruction book for the, for the hinges. And it showed these things. Now it, turned out, it turns out these are actually designed for exactly what I'm trying to do here, which is mount a shelf further forward so it sits against flush with the door. I don't have a clue why this comes with the hinges and not the shelves, because they're all sold separately. So if you wanted to put a shelf at the front, you have to buy the hinge set to get this part, which doesn't really make much sense. But yeah, so what we've got, we've got these parts here. And what these do is these install, they're, they're different sizes left and right. So that's the right. So what we do is we take this attempt out, we put that in there like that, put a screw through into the bottom using screws, because I wonder what these bits were. You screw that bit in there, do the same on all the sides, and that now gives you a shelf fixing that's slightly higher up and further to the front. So, yeah, read the instructions, and I, every time I build IKEA furniture, I don't read the instructions, I then do something stupid, and then wish I read the instructions. And I've done it again here. So I'll now take all these bits out, put these in, and in some ways actually quite good, because these do seem quite secure as well, a bit more secure than my, you know, re-drilled holes. So yeah, it is a bit annoying that these only come with a hinge kit though, because it means that I can't actually do the same with this bottom shelf, because I've only got four of these, because you get four with the hinges. So it's fine in a setting like this, where you only want one shelf further forward, but it does mean that the shelf inside, I'd either have to do the drill modification again, but doing it properly this time, or I'd have to buy another hinge kit, which is quite expensive. But that's fine, at least, I've, at least I've found out how to do it. So yeah, don't go drilling holes if you've bought the hinge kit, just use the bits it comes with that are designed for it. And if not, you could drill the holes, but yeah, measure so these sit like that and not like that, because that's not how they're actually meant to go in. Anyway, time to fix this. There we go, so after a lot of faff, I've now installed the shelf correctly. And it really does pay to actually read the instructions, although the instructions for the hinges, not the shelf, because the parts came with the hinges, I don't know. But yeah, that's installed there. And as you can see down the back, there's quite a large, large big gap to feed cables, so that's enough to feed all the cables from the receiver down into the cupboard below. I might still drill a hole with a hole saw through the back of this part as well, just to get all the speaker cables out, just so they're, so they're not all sneaking down in behind all the stuff here. So I'll probably drill one hole at the bottom on the back, and one hole just behind the receiver, again, close to the shelf, just to get some of the cables from the receiver out the back, just to save snaking cables around inside here. But that should be fairly easy to do. Next, all I need to do is now install the other shelf, which goes inside it. So I've got that here, it's the exact same shelf. But because I don't have another set of those mounting plates, because they only came with the hinges, I can't mount this sitting forward against the door. This will have to sit right against the back, which means that there won't be a sort of gap at the back to have cables come through. So what I think I'll need to do is I'll need to just take like the whole saw to this or something. I mean, I could just try and saw a notch out, but that'll probably look rubbish. I mean, it'll work, but I don't really fancy jigsawing it out. I might just use the whole saw and just try and cut a sort of semicircle that overlaps the edge slightly. And that'll let me get some cables between this and the area below. So it's probably not too bad. I'll probably just do that. It'll work. And these shelves are pretty cheap. So if I muck it up, it's not a big problem. And that'll just give me a bit more space to get cables from the top shelf to the bottom shelf, just for routing cables between like the power strip and then the... PC and satellite box on the top shelf and then ultimately bringing cables up through from the bottom shelf into the AV receiver. So yeah, very quick modification to this shelf and then we should be good to go. Okay, so I've now used a 76mm hole saw to cut a little semicircle out the back. As you can see, it's not the perfect shape because it does curve in slightly here because the hole saw couldn't be sitting right, like the centre couldn't be right against the end, but it's totally fine, it's neat enough. So what I can do is that I can go right towards the back of the cupboard and all the cables can feed between the two shelves. It's not neatest because you can like see inside almost like the cardboard construction of the shelf, but it's fine. I might try and I'll just clean it out, dust it out and make sure I hoover in here just so there's no dust shedding out of this and that'll be good enough. So all I'll do is clean all this up, get this all tidied up a little bit and then get the shelf installed. Okay, so that's it all now assembled. So you can see you've got the top shelf in there and if we open the door, we've got the other shelf in there. I've also installed this glass top 
that's another optional extra, but I would definitely recommend something like that because the top of this, like the wood isn't very good quality. So if you started putting heavy things down or had like a plant on it and water spilled out, I wouldn't really trust it. So this little glass top isn't much more and it just makes it a lot more durable. And I think it looks a bit better as well. If we come down a bit lower, you can also now see the hole that I've drilled behind the AV receiver, as well as one in the bottom right hand corner. That allows me to route all the cables out. So some of the cables that go straight to the AV receiver, such as the speaker ones, can go straight through the top behind it. And then other cables such as power and ethernet to various devices can pop out the bottom and go around the corner. So that'll minimise how much I need to route down the back. So that'll be quite neat, just putting those two holes there. I just use a hole saw to drill into the back panel, it was dead easy to do. And we also see in the back here, we've got the hole that goes between the two shelves. So that allows me to route cables between the two shelves. It's not the neatest edge in the world on that, but it's fine because all the devices will sit in front, so you'll never see it. So yeah, that's it done there. Okay, so it's now time to reinstall all this equipment into the new cabinet. It's been sitting like this for ages just because it took so long to get the new cabinet bought, but now that's done, I can now get it all moved in. So I'll be putting the AV receiver on the top shelf, putting the satellite receiver inside the shelf, and then that rack mount PC there I'll be getting rid of, and I'll be putting a Mac Mini in, in its place, and I showed that Mac Mini in the previous video. So yeah, time to go and do that. Okay, so that's all now installed. So we've got the new cabinet here, which looks a lot neater than that old rack, and then the subwoofer on the floor next to it. The subwoofer does stand out because it's black, but I will be replacing this very shortly with a white one, so that'll look a lot better. So stay tuned for a future video where I get all new speakers for this room. Then here we've got the cabinet, and it looks really neat. So that's it there. It's got a nice glass top, which I really like. And in the top, you can see we've got this big space for the AV receiver. This is really good. There's loads of space around it for ventilation. Because this does get quite hot in use, definitely puts out quite a bit of heat, even in eco mode that it's in now. So having this space here will just allow a lot of air to get out. So if I put my hand in there, it is actually quite warm because it is switched on and running, but that lets it stay perfectly cool. And it runs a lot cooler like this than it did in the old rack even though the old rack did have a cooling fan. Down here we can see we've got a little cable. That's actually an extension cable for the USB that has my Logitech unifying receiver for the computer in it because I couldn't quite get a signal out from this rack, from this cabinet, so I've just plugged that in there to let the keyboard and touchpad combination get a signal better. I'll probably replace that with something Bluetooth based in the future. But now if you open this up, we can either push it in or we can just open it. And then here we can see the devices. So on the right, we've got my free terrace athlete receiver that I made a video of previously. And on the left, we've got the Mac Mini that I showed in my last video. So it all sits in there very neatly. And then we've got this one shelf below, which currently just holds like the extension lead and some cables and stuff that I do need to tidy up, but it'll do. But this is also quite useful storage for things like remotes, bits like that. And what I might do is I might put the PS2 and Wii on this shelf. I don't actually use them at all, but I've got them sitting around, so I may as well put them in. So I might put them on this shelf here. And it means I've got a lot of space to grow with this. So yeah, that's it all there. And it's definitely a lot neater than that giant rack had before, which while I loved it, did definitely stand out quite badly in the room. So there we go. That's the look at some changes I made to my home AV setup, where I've taken that big giant server rack out of here, put it in my office, which is a much better place for it, and got a nice new cabinet to have all my AV equipment in. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. And stand by for future videos when I do more upgrades where I get all these new speakers, which will be an even bigger upgrade than even this was. So yeah, thanks for watching.